What is going on, guys? It is your Dr. Dersh bringing you part one of three parts to my PC build uh, little montage of videos. Um, so part one is the guts. We're going to be talking about uh, the insides of my computer and why I chose each and every single part. So before I started collecting parts for a computer, I had to do quite a bit of homework. I had to figure out what am I going to be using this computer for? What is, uh, what's going to be the main purpose and the reasons why I go with certain parts. So this computer needed to do a lot of things for me. One, I wanted to play Minecraft in ray tracing. So I was going to need a ray tracing card of some sort. So we're going to talk about uh, the specifics there. I needed a ray tracing card. So that's one thing that this computer needed to do for me. Two, this PC had to be quiet. It needs to be a very quiet machine. And I'm going to get into detail on some of the parts I chose and why I believe that they are quiet enough to be in this build. Uh, another thing that this PC had to do was it had to edit. It had to be able to edit videos, edit photos. Um, it just needed to be an editing beast. So, um, and you're going to see why this thing will be an editing beast. Number four is that this PC had to be a storage beast. This thing had to have so much storage. Um, for the longest time, I worked on a laptop that only had 125 gigs of storage. That is changing full on. This It's completely a different story with this PC build. Um, and number five, and the final reason why I chose some of these parts, um, it had to it had to be lit up like a Christmas tree. We had to make sure we got enough RGB in this thing to look pretty as hell. So let's get right into this. Let's see here. We're gonna start with the two parts you guys already probably know about. We're gonna start with the Ryzen 7 uh, 2700X. This, the reason why I went with this CPU is because uh, we had to go with the CPU that had uh, many cores that was going to be good for uh, <coughs> it's going to be good for editing. So I went with an eight core CPU and uh, sixteen thread as well. We're we're planning on uh, my buddy's going to be helping me build this as well. We're planning on overclocking the CPU as well. We're going to see if we can get uh, out of the three point seven gigahertz base and see if we can boost it to. Uh, over four, something over four, and then uh, eventually that max boost will kick in later when I start doing some sort of editing. But yeah, um, the reason why I went with the 2700X besides that, I mean, there's so many better P uh, CPUs I could have gone with, is because um, this thing, I believe, was 150 or 160 bucks at the time. So 150 to 160 bucks on Newegg um, is just not possible right now. So I really got this at a good time. And uh, I think this is gonna be a very sufficient CPU for, for what I need. It is a Zen Plus CPU. Zen 2 and Zen 3 are out right now. And maybe down the road I could go Zen 2 or Zen 3. But right now we're gonna stick with this 2700X and we're gonna we're going to see how it does. Um, by the way, I will not be using the Wraith cooler that is included. Uh, and I will get into the reason why later on. So this, uh, I had to think about editing when I chose the CPU. So that is part number one. We're going to talk about the other part that you guys already know about. That's quite a bit of a shocker to me. The RTX 3070, specifically the MSI Ventus 3X. So... The reason why I went with this and not a uh, the reason why I went with this and not the uh, 2000 series was because these uh, this this GPU uh, specifically is supposed to trade blows with the 2080 and the 2080 Super, possibly the 2080 Ti. We'll see, but it's supposed to trade blows for un more than half the cost. So. A 2080 Ti is $1,200 to put that into perspective. 
And this guy is right over 500 bucks, probably about 550, 560. So, um, and it's supposed to trade blows. It's probably the biggest, uh, it's the most we've ever seen uh, a GPU push forward in, in history, apparently, since like 2004, something like that. And although it's cheaper, it's supposed to be better. So that's, that's freaking awesome. This thing also has DLSS included. That was one of the main reasons why I chose this GPU. Um, when you're playing ray tracing Minecraft, which is one of the reasons why I'm uh, going with this GPU, when you're playing ray tracing Minecraft, you can't, uh, something that I'm going to recommend to anybody, uh, you're probably going to want to try and stay away from any AMD uh, next gen GPUs. The ones uh, specifically 6800, 6800X, and the 6900X. Um, those do not include DLSS for uh, ray tracing. So the only ones that do include DLSS are the uh, the NVIDIA cards. And NVIDIA does make cards without DLSS. So be careful on which ones you buy because you could end up with a card without DLSS. Now, if ray tracing doesn't matter to you, by all means, you got to shoot for those AMD cards. I'm sure they're great cards. But since ray tracing was such a big deal to me, this was the card I went with. And it's overclocked. It's already overclocked. That's freaking awesome, if you ask me. So, and this thing is also going to be a beast for um, for editing and photo editing as well. I mean, this thing is not just for Minecraft. It's going to be for all sorts of things. It is a monster GPU, and right now it's very difficult to find. It is Black Friday. You won't find these on the market right now. So, I'm very excited to get this in my build. I'm still in shock that I have it. So. That is a phenomenal piece to my my build. <coughs> All right, let's get into some parts that I have not talked about yet. Um, probably the next most important piece to my build is the motherboard. And I decided to go Asus on the motherboard. We went with uh, ROG Strix X570E gaming motherboard. And um, this thing looks freaking cool as hell. Um, the reason why I went with this motherboard, I suppose, if there was any reasons why, um, one, it's an X570, and it's a really, uh, it's a really nice one too. Um, by the way, I didn't mention this, but I got that card at MSRP, five hundred some dollars. So. It wasn't, uh, and I guess that the sixth reason for a bunch of these parts was budget as well. Some of them are not budget, some of them are. Man, I'm really getting off track, but back on track with the motherboard. This motherboard costed me $299, $300. So I got it on sale. Um, it is a very, very nice motherboard for that price. And I had to look out for that sale so many times. There were so many times that I missed the sale and it came back and missed it and came back and finally I got one. But uh, I think one of the biggest reasons why I went with this card and not uh, a different brand, I suppose, was because of the amount of USB ports on the, uh, the, the IO sh or on the backs on the IO. So the back panel IO, whatever. There's, let me count here. I see one, two, three, four, um, five, six, six, maybe, I don't know. I, I see six on the back, which is pretty, that's a good amount of USB ports, including, I mean, the USB ports that are on my case right now. I do have my case hanging out, by the way. I'll tell you more about it here in a little bit. But it also has a BIOS flashback through the USB port as well. Has dual M.2 heat sinks. Uh, I definitely needed some M.2 heat, or I need some M.2 spots. And another reason why I went, went with an X570 is because I won't have to upgrade this for a long time. I could have went with, uh, an, I think it's called an A520. Uh, those just came out recently, by the way. And I could have went B550. Um, B550s are actually pretty nice, um, but I won't have to upgrade this motherboard for a long time, unless I'm changing chips, uh, probably to Zen 4. If I go to Zen 4, then yes, I will need a new motherboard because the chipset will be different. Um, other than that, I mean, it does have three PCI Express slots, 
Four slots for RAM, which I might use in the future. We'll see. Um, and it has, I think it has quite a bit of RGB headers on there as well. So, and RGB was pretty important to me. But I guess, I don't know if there's any other reason why I decided to go with this besides all that. So, and it had to be a Ryzen, uh, had to be a Ryzen motherboard. So I went with that. 299 bucks. That's really good for that motherboard. It's really, really nice board. Next thing to talk about, we're going to talk about RAM just for the hell of it. Um, I ended up getting the wrong RAM actually. I got some Intel RAM. Now this is still going to work on the motherboard. I just won't be able to get the uh, actual speeds out of this that it, that it advertised. This is DDR4 Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, uh, two 16 uh, gigabyte sticks totaling up to 32 gigs of RAM. And it's at 3200 megahertz speed. And I'm probably only gonna be able to squeeze out 2100 to 2600 megahertz speed when we actually get these puppies plugged in. And uh, one of the reasons why I chose this RAM was because I needed to choose an RGB scheme that was gonna last throughout the entire build. And Corsair has some beautiful RGB that goes throughout an entire PC build. So. Every bit of RGB that I got, I tried to make it Corsair. Besides the motherboard, Corsair doesn't make motherboards, so I couldn't do that. Um, what was nice about the graphics card is it doesn't have RGB, and I don't have to play with Mystic Light or I think that's what it's called, MSI Mystic or something like that. So I will basically be using Aura Sync and Corsair's IQ software only for the RGB, and that's going to be really nice. Obviously, IQ offers more than RGB settings. Um, I'll be able to monitor a lot of different things as well. MSI Mystic Light Sync. Okay, so this is actually compatible with MSI Mystic Light Sync anyway, but that doesn't matter. It's also compatible with Aura Sync, but best used with, uh, with IQ. Now, it is Intel RAM, so in the future, I do plan on replacing those with um, four 8 gig sticks because I do have four spots for RAM. I'm only gonna be occupying two for the time being, but uh, eventually I'm gonna to wanna to get, I wanna get that 3200 speed and I'm probably just gonna get four sticks, eight gigs per stick and make sure that it works with my motherboard properly. So that is the plan. All right, now we're gonna get into some fun stuff. Uh, we're gonna talk about an AIO. I got an all-in-one liquid cooler for for my build. This is the Corsair uh, IQ H100i RGB Pro XT. They really don't make these names very easy. I, I had to read that. I would have never remembered that. Now, the reason why I went with this guy and not some uh, RGB uh, fans on, on a radiator already is because these fans aren't actually going to be visible to the build. And the centerpiece will. The centerpiece is RGB if you can't see it. Uh, I could probably just hold it up. Yeah, that makes it a little bit easier to see. Fans are not RGB, but the centerpiece is that will be cooling the PC. And the reason why I decided to go with this is because we are going to be doing some overclocking. And I do want a quieter cooling solution than the, than the Wraith that comes with uh, the CPU. So this was going to be a good... Uh, this was going to be a good uh, replacement for the Wraith. This is a 240 millimeter liquid uh, liquid cooler. 240 millimeter, that's in fans, by the way. And my plan is to put this in the front of the PC, not on the top, but in the front. So, and also, uh, let's keep in mind, this is Corsair RGB. So, got to keep all your RGB intact. Keep it all one brand. We're going to make some RGB and IQ and shit like that. Let's talk about some more cooling. Uh, and by the way, that was like 120 bucks. So not a bad, not a bad buy there. But however, these guys were not very budget. Let me tell you, these are the Corsair LL120 RGB fans. And I got four of them. I got a three pack here and a one pack here. And let me tell you, these puppies were not, they were not cheap. Um, I think... This guy is definitely well over 100 bucks. I'd say 120 to 130, maybe 140 bucks. I don't remember. And this was like 30 to 40 bucks. Now, they look phenomenal in RGB, okay? I had to make sure I got the best RGB fans. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure 
she was going to be quiet too. And these are supposed to be <coughs> some of the quietest RGB fans on the market. So I definitely did my homework there. I want to make sure the fans aren't going to be loud. And these are supposed to be a very quiet solution for, for fans. Now, I could have just went with uh, uh, some Be Quiet fans, but Be Quiet doesn't exactly make, uh, they don't make RGB fans. So I had to go with the brand that I'm lighting up, you know, Corsair. And those will work in IQ as well. Um, let's talk about storage. So I just mentioned that my laptop only had uh, 120 gigs of storage. 120 gigs of storage, are you kidding me? I've been playing with that laptop since 2015 and with only 120 gigs of storage. Now, I've had I've had a solution around that. I've had these, uh, these guys, I mean, everybody knows what these are. These are some external storage um, solutions. They're about two terabytes of a piece. One of them died on me and it was a really cool looking one too. I have two of those right now. I've uh, replaced the one that died and I was able to get everything off of it and put it on a different one, thanks to my school. But we had to think of something that was gonna be a little bit better than those. We can't just use external storages our entire life. So let's get into the upgrade here. First of all, the first thing I wanna talk about is the M.2 uh, Samsung 970 EVO plus this is an M.2 drive and it's 250 gigabytes and I know you're looking at me like that's all you upgraded to you only got 250 gigs no in fact I got another EVO and this one's a terabyte so we have a terabyte plus 250 gigs the 250 gig is specifically for the uh for Windows. When I download Windows, that's where my OS is going to go, is on this drive. This drive is probably going to be where I put all of my apps, all of my games, just so they're moving nice and quick. So, but that's not all. That's not all at all, okay? That sounded weird. What I have here, I don't have, do I have it written on this one? No, I don't have it written on this one, but I can take it out of the box just because why not? What I have here is a six terabyte, a six terabyte WD Black hard drive. Now this is a uh, this is a drive with a disk in it, of course, but it's a WD Black, so this thing is supposed to be a performance drive. I don't know how loud she's gonna get, but six terabytes plus a terabyte plus two hundred fifty gigs. I think that's pretty damn good upgrade so far. I mean, we're at seven terabytes plus 250 gigs, but that's not all. We got, we got more. I got a second. I got a second six terabyte WD hard drive. So we're dealing with 12, 13, so 13, 13,250 gigabytes of storage over 125 gigs. 13,250 gigabytes of storage. If we're if we're talking in gigs, then that's what it is right there. If we're talking in terabytes, it's basically a little over 13 terabytes of storage. That is plenty of storage. And why is storage such a big deal to me? Because I'm editing videos. If I'm if I don't have enough storage to edit these videos, then I basically get cut off mid-project on so many occasions on my laptop. So that is never, it is never going to happen again. And I am so happy I went this route. I'm so happy I got two M.2s and I went with two WD Blacks. These WD Blacks are probably the best, probably the most expensive uh, solutions to anybody's storage uh, issues that they have. Um, I believe the 250 gig uh, SSD was 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, this was actually a gift from somebody. Uh, the one terabyte, I believe was over a hundred bucks. Probably. I don't exactly remember how much this was. It was just a little over a hundred bucks though. Um, the six terabyte drives, one of them I got at MSRP for probably 220 to 240 bucks. 
And then the other one I got at on a sale price for 180 to 190 bucks. So one of these I got a really good deal on and one of them I just kind of got shit on, which is fine. I mean, I got a deal on one of them. That's all that matters. And my God, they're heavy. I had no idea that they were that heavy. Holy crap. Those got some weight to them. All right, we are getting down to the last bit, bits of our... Uh, our bill. Let's take a break from the boxes and let's talk about the box. This is the Be Quiet uh, Dark Base 700. And that is not the first time you're going to hear that brand in my build, Be Quiet. Uh, the reason why it shows this case is it has two more USB 3, 3.0 ports on the front, has a USB 3.1 on the front, USB Type C to be exact. Um, it has a fan control on it from one, two, and three. And also you can put it on auto if you want. It comes with two 240 millimeter fans already included. It comes with th three drive cages. And I, I mean, they're, well, it comes with three drive cages, two to go in the bottom. And then you could also put five drive, five or six. Looks like five. You can put five in the top as well. I'm not going to get this case out and show it off completely or anything. What I might do is I might put some some pictures on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But if I ever wanted to upgrade my storage, I could add seven, a total of seven drives, I believe, not including uh, regular SSDs. I'm talking about hard drives. Um, if I wanted to add more SSDs, that wouldn't be too much of an issue. But I went with the Be Quiet case because I need this thing to be quiet. I need it to be silent. She's got to be real quiet. If I'm going to be streaming, then I don't want people to be hearing my, uh, my PC while I'm streaming, you know, just going to work under load. And another Be Quiet piece that I ended up going with, good segue here, is the Be Quiet Straight Power 11 power supply. This is an 850 watt platinum power supply and she's got some silent wing fans on it and uh it's also a fully modular uh power supply so <sighs> this thing is a beast and she's heavy too i didn't know that i mean i kind of figured this would be a heavy piece and this will be not visible in the build this will actually go underneath the uh the bot the bottom of the the inside of the pc pretty hard to explain as well unless you're seeing it on the screen but that, those things I got for normal price, I think. I don't exactly remember. I think the case was 180 bucks, which is pretty steep for a case that old. And then the power supply, that was kind of a, a difficult to get a hold of as well right now. I mean, every part that I got was not easy to get with COVID. COVID has just made everything so difficult. But I, I figured it out. Um, I was patient, very, very patient. Obviously, it took an entire year to get this thing done. All right, now we're going to talk about some non-essential things. Everything I've talked about has been pretty essential. You want fans, you want storage, you don't need to take it to my extent, of course, but you need those things. These things are, I got peripherals as well. Uh, speaking of peripherals, one of them is right behind me, um, if you want to count monitor as peripherals. That is a Gigabyte um, G2 or G27Q. It is a 27-inch monitor. It has a one millisecond response time with 144 hertz, I believe. 144 hertz, and it's a 1440p monitor, 2K to be exact. Not a 4K monitor, but it's 2K. I got it for a little over 300 bucks, I believe. 300 bucks, yes, I think that's about what I got it for. And she's hooked up to my MacBook right now, because why not? I'll talk about my other peripherals here in a second, because I kept the boxes on those. But uh, something you guys were already aware of, I got the 4K60 Pro capture card. Why is capture card important to me? Because there might be a time where I am looking to play some console games with, with some friends. Um, I'm not saying that I'm going to get Call of Duty for the console. I'll probably get it for the PC and play with the controller. But if there ever is a console game that entices me that I can't get on PC, I can still record it and stream it with this. So... This is just uh, for backup, if if you ask me at this point. I mean, it sounds like I'm going to be doing a lot of gaming on the PC now with PC games, but I do have an Xbox One X, and I do intend to get some more use out of that. I haven't played it very much, but...
but I do want to get more use out of it. And this is going to help me get more use out of that Xbox because it's a great machine still. All right. <clears throat> Peripherals, last two pieces. Uh, I decided to go with uh, M65 RGB Elite Corsair mouse. Uh, the reason why I chose this one is because it was Corsair. It has RGB on it. You know, it's got a I needed some uh, unicorn vomit all over my, my desk, and this was going to be a perfect choice. It is wired, so it's going to be nice for gaming. Um, she's got some weights on the bottom of it as well, uh, removable weights, actually. And that can also be controlled in Corsair's IQ RGB software. Keyboard. I think this is the last piece I'm talking about, guys. I chose the Corsair Strafe RGB Mark II. Reason why I went with the Strafe is because it's got MX Cherry Silent Switches. The reason why I wanted Silent Switches is because I'm an editor. There's a lot of times, believe it or not, there's a lot of times I find myself editing without music. I don't edit with music a lot, actually. And that's, uh, that's normally the case when I'm video editing. When I'm doing photo editing, that's not normally the case. I'll have some music in the background for sure. But when I'm video editing, I have to be solely concentrated on what I can hear because audio is a big thing when it comes to video editing. And I don't want to, I don't want an annoying keyboard. And I actually have this keyboard out right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but that is a quiet, Nice and quiet keyboard. And I'm very happy with that. And I think it's blinking at me because it's trying to tell me, hey, your computer's not on. You shouldn't do that. Well, tough. And it's got RGB on it. Also controllable in Corsair's IQ software. That, I believe that is going to do it for my build. I mean, I got a Corsair RGB mouse pad, which is not like an essential thing anybody needs. Um... That, oh, I guess I did get some speakers as well. I got the Logitech uh, Z623, something like that. But uh, they're speakers that I've used in school and they're very nice. Another thing that I've got along with this PC build is some acoustic panels. If you guys haven't seen these before, these are great. If you, get, if you have some echoes in your room, you can cover that up with some acoustic panels. I'll probably throw those on the back of my, my wall here. Um, Besides all that, I think that's actually going to do it for this video. That is the guts. That is the guts, the innards of my PC. Um, if you guys have any questions or uh, if you have if you have any questions about why I went with certain pieces when I could have gone with other things, don't hesitate to ask those down in the comments because I, I feel like I gave a pretty good reason for all of these parts. Um, it's going to stream well. It's going to be nice and quiet. It's gonna be lit up like a Christmas tree with unicorn vomit everywhere. Um, it's a storage beast and it's everything I could have asked for in a, in a PC. I am so excited to play Minecraft and ray tracing, by the way. I, I've been looking to do that for such a long time, ever since I watched the Neebs Gaming guys do it on their, uh, their channel. Um, I knew that someday I was going to do that. And here we are, two weeks out from this build. This video is probably not coming out till January or something. Maybe the end of December. We'll see. But um, stay tuned for part two of the PC build where we actually build this in a time lapse. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. Please leave some comments down below. I love reading them, talking to you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
the, did you, what did you think? It was awesome. Leave the bitch, please. You like the bitch? I've liked the bitch on the fucking <laughs> homestead. <laughs>